Hi there, this is Yuhuna Taunt, and uh, this is a history and autobiography on this person's music adventure. Uh, been uh, playing since 2003. I think it's been, let's see, over 11, no, my goodness, maybe 13, 14 years now. And a lot has happened since then. And I thought it was time to express some some of the history through this video. For those of you who don't know who this person is, uh, have over 300 pieces. I think it's going on 320, something like that. And have over 20, 25 albums. And it's amazing. Every each year, always have something to share. And it's been a very interesting journey. Uh, so let's get started. As you might notice these keyboards here, this keyboard right here was my mother's. It's the Yamaha PSR-47 uh, that she purchased in the early 90s. Uh, she actually influenced me in playing music right off the bat. Um, she played a lot of pieces and uh, was uh, very fond of some of the pieces uh, one, especially one which I, this person recorded uh, in the Meditations 3 album, uh, Faded, Faded Souls, uh, it was called Mother's Cry, and uh, th that tune really uh, has stuck with me over the years. Uh, it's interesting because my mother doesn't remember playing it, and she would play different uh, uh, styles of it, different interpretations, but never was that one, never understood why. But there's plenty of tapes in our garage that this person would love to pull out and see what she recorded on this thing. Uh, I think some of the keys are a little stuck, uh, not playing sounds, but there are times this person takes this out to remind this person of the origins. Um, it was really in the back of this person's mind in the early 90s was you know 11 12 uh, 13 14 years old when hearing uh, my mother's music but it really I uh, think it, it something triggered for some situation uh, uh, I think it was the classical I think it's KXPR I don't know exactly if that was said correctly in the Sacramento area the classical they had uh, I think it was, it could have been Hearts of Space. We'll see. I, I, I honestly can't remember exactly, but remember uh, someone playing this beautiful keyboard tune, and uh, it always stuck with me. I didn't know who did it, didn't know what it was, uh, how it came about, and why it was on a classical station. Um, but it actually came from the CD I found out many years later, uh, Van Gelis. Of voices it was the prelude let's see if it's on here the prelude uh, piece really stuck it's a beautiful piece and uh, there was something that was born during that time that really thought you know I really started to get into you know the the that keyboard sound uh, and uh, remember picking up albums uh, when Circus City was around and actually remember they had these CDs you know from Spectrum in which you would uh, listen to uh, you know uh, re uh, just people's interpretation of these original pieces and for the longest time those were the pieces I, uh, that I remember playing so it was that you know playing to me I didn't ever heard the original ones because just could not find them that just went around by the time of the mid 90s you didn't really see a lot of the electronic uh, you know keyboard players that you would find you know in the you know late 70s and 80s and uh, I just remember listening to those things and think that really helped uh, cultivate something there as far as musical expression and uh, not having such a polished product not to say spectrum darn good cds but it's nowhere near the original right um, but i think it was some time after that um, when this person was online in the 90, late 90s and went into the early 2000s. Uh, if you, many of people will remember 
back in that time, people didn't have, you know, it was very rare to have MP3s up because they had so much space. It was just coming out. Before that, period came about there was really something called MIDI and MIDI did exist you know in the 80s or something but the a actual MIDI uh, a, a piece that you would load online and would listen to because it was very little uh, bytes you know that you could easily download and uh, remember hearing a lot of those uh, in my early 20s and uh, that started to get me to uh, listen. I re remember this one site. Hopefully one day I could find it. But uh, remember um, actually listening to one site where they had uh, Jare uh, MIDI tracks. And the first time I heard some of those, fantastic. It's amazing how you appreciate some of the artist work more when you see, you know, um, let's i don't don't want to say counterfeits but uh, you know facsimiles of the real thing and you start to realize okay what is this I, I, again i never could find the albums I, you know amazon was just starting then and um, but basically it was around 2002 and i'm going to going to go ahead and uh, get some notes here because uh, just trying to remember all the the, the times and um, just trying to keep it in but you know uh, basically really what started it says here that in in 2003 uh started the, what was known as the midi years remember uh, a person who was part of a site i was working to her name uh, was rebecca and uh, she was uh, playing some things on the midi that she would you know many those midi programs that you would see online and uh, she would really you know she would get into it and show you know told me you know about this program and remember actually uh started to take it just downloaded and just right off the bat started to create pieces remember uh this person's real complete piece was um life ship which um came i think it was 2003 that was really the more polished piece now you listen to it it's you know this is nowhere near you know the professional grid that most people uh, expect but you have to realize back then the midi sound you know on a website it was very it's, it was really a big deal and uh, remember it, releasing I think I think uh, uh, before that time it was early 2003 was um remember having this out and uh did something like a pre uh prototype meditations deal that was so bad it was just it just did not sound right when it was played back and it's it's a shame but it was a lot of ambient a lot of classical ambient sound but it led me to create the experiences uh, it's called experiences, however small and significant. It just decided, just like Rebecca did, just to express the experiences that were going on in my, you know, my life. Uh, you know, life ship, the life just traveling forward. You you hear like release, and uh, a lot of those. Uh, my hope is strong is a wonderful actual song that you could sing to, but actually played on the MIDI wonderful piece you would love to to replay it and uh, really uh, use that as a way to express something that was going on that you know words could not explain and to, uh, which led to a later project called uh, music poems uh, which those two albums were mainly the MIDI albums and those I think it was mainly around 2003 where I uh, really started to get into it by the second album music I think it was called music poema at the time changed it to music poems but uh, what happened was noticed the first album was really classical with and the drum sound was very uh, you know something to be desired you know you have to appreciate when it was made and then 
going into music poems uh, really started to get into drums and setting and now realize this is on a very simple freeware MIDI program with very basic sounds you know maybe a hundred sounds that you could that was part of a, you know a traditional Windows uh, you know sound card that had basic MIDI sounds okay uh, that's the how humble you know the origin started and remember it was around you know the end of 2003 uh, music poems never really got completely finished um, it, later on you know in recent years finally was able to remaster you know the album and, and get it more of a more uh, finished product but that's when this person remembers going to Costco um, and seeing this keyboard right here. This is the um, Yamaha DGX 500, and uh, it's uh, it was just uh, blew my mind that they had something like this available. It would think it was about five hundred dollars at that time, and uh, you know said said to my dad, "Want to get this?" Saved up some money and bought this sucker and uh, you could see um, if if you um, we'll have to think right here if that will show um, there it actually took a three and a half you know diskette and would actually record that way for many years uh, and everything was played track by track live didn't edit it uh, played that way for many years and it, it, you can imagine the practice it took to go from a MIDI program to this, and which led into what the, the notes say, uh, the experimental years, the Yamaha years from 2004 to 2006. Uh, the first album that was done here, right after, right after um, the music poems, was an album called Future Predictions, and it was actually supposed to be two parts, um, but half the track sounded, they had, you know, the quality was just not there, and, and yeah, I just said, you know, man, I'm, you know, this, it was very frustrating, especially those first couple years, uh, but uh, eventually uh, was able to remaster it in recent years again, and was able to. Uh, couldn't complete a two-part album, but think it, it became like a, a album and a half about 16 17 tracks It finally can fix some of the errors that was created because this is all you know playing live You play one track at a time and you got one go at it There was many times playing over and over again and you can see from these stickers right here how worn they are I actually had um, um, the A, B, C, you know, the sharps and all that, and uh, you could see um, really got into the playing. So, um, a future prediction really has a C sound and really didn't get the style of this person's music back then. Uh, and uh, but eventually, knew after the release of future predictions, this person really needed to practice. And uh, it took about a year, I think it says here, yeah, from July 2004 to June 2005, was doing a lot of uh, practice sessions, would just record whatever came out, uh, saved hundreds, hundreds of tracks, you know, even if just in a sound that sounded good, just really started to, to get it. It's amazing how much this kind of keyboard has produced so much sound over the years we'll get to when this person started to go beyond this keyboard but it was um, the pro uh, the project moments of reflection in 2005 where the f this person finally got it and uh, you can you could tell that it was a classical piano sound just pure even when you play it today it just sounds timeless because it really has that classical sound, and uh, uh, real, there was one piece, "Heavenly Presence," that, that has been played at, uh, on this website here, uh, has been played the most, probably more than any track. Uh, let's see, uh, actually some other tracks, but for many years, 
I think it was since it was like hundreds and hundreds of plays and uh, so many people have appreciated that album and start to realize that was a key album for me um, it was still an exper experimental time um, by 2006 by 2006 um, created an album called mosaic which was based on a um, lecture or uh, written um, you know message that Rebecca had made on this website and uh, really mosaic was basically a mosaic of different styles of music that was this person was experiencing that was not necessarily classical or keyboard sounding like like future predictions but was very uh, different some sounded more like uh, nature some were very short some were longer some were very out there echoish and really appreciate the album now not uh, there's a lot of tracks finally was able to add but uh, you know it wasn't the most successful album I think uh, the the one track there's nothing like a diamond uh, remember when recording that um, this thing could only take so much space on uh, that it could save on this keyboard and remember playing that track and using every bit of space that this person could keep on this thing and just remember it's another one of those like my hope is strong remember the words to it and uh, really uh, was a breakthrough remember playing that um, I think it really led to the next album here and this is what goes into the classical years because started to realize that moments of reflection and realize none of this was on the website yet and it wasn't until 2007 and that's when it was doing the classical years um, it wasn't until the Battle of Principalities was released and it was really classical sounding bombastic a wonderful album um, you know the person was very limited to the tools that were available back then and again this person's still learning but the sand that just really can sense the bomb bombastic very soundtrackish uh, piece they were gone they went through movements a movement to uh, really started to understand what electronica was and how that worked and then you had uh, movement six which was absolutely gorgeous uh, just a, a very hybrid electronic classical sound and some really key pieces that this person remembers playing on that album and it was during that time of the battle of principalities that this person decided to start going online and ever since that time have used this website back here um, from SoundClick. it had just you know it was there for about four or five years and decided to use it at that time because it'd been around it's been through some uh, trials for sure it's not as popular as it used to especially with SoundCloud but now with you know they've finally repaired the you know music player um, it actually it's actually uh, starting to get a handle on it again but it you know it still appreciated it because what would this person would use is the charts because the charts would show me if uh, you know not necessarily pleasing the crowd but would show you know and is this person going the right direction musically or the wrong is this making sense that sort of thing so a lot of uh, wonderful pieces created during that time uh, I remember two projects uh, beautiful with time and uh, poetry and light uh, which was dedicated uh, poetry and light was for uh, dedicated to my youngest sister Melissa and beautiful with time was with Rebecca and they were basically I think about 20 minutes long of three pieces it was just a simple project a poem um, that a very poetic time period which uh, led to the album Messiah's Children back then it was called Epiphany's Children but it really continued what had been going on with the Battle of Principalities since that was such a key album at that time and uh, it, just remembered that this 
this person had was going through Delta taking a writing class at the time and remember writing when it was going to write a synopsis of a story called Epiphany's Children and that actually worked into uh, the, the, the Messiah's Children or Epiphany's Children as it was called back then album which had some really key you know um, tracks uh, the children is a wonderful track love the the children in the background just all, all out of this keyboard it's, it's just amazing got the maximum amount this person could get from this keyboard here um, that's when this person I remember had uh, I was gone from my I was working janitorial you know graveyard at the time and uh, you know around 2006 2007 had uh, been laid off for a position had volunteered a layoff so this person could refocus on the you know this person's life and uh, it wasn't until the end of uh, Messiah's children that uh, this person had a new position and suddenly was working part-time and then got into to full-time and uh, life started to really change at that time and uh, remember this one album that there was one night uh, let's see when it said January 15th 2008 remember playing five pieces remember had this this keyboard hooked up to to um, all these speakers and the headphones it was late that night it was cold remember it is and uh, just there was five different uh, tracks that you can record for the song and just recorded one two three four five recorded five songs out of one of each track just played it just like that and basically it was a personal concert and uh, uh, one of the most intimate albums if you hear some of the tracks it's it's, it's called impromptu because it's obviously that but um, having you some of the tracks on there are very personal and uh, uh, very touching uh, it was probably the most intimate project you know this person now that this person thinks about it it was after that point in time I remember um, going into 2008 and remember uh, meeting uh, my, my friend Joseph in, in getting into the video games and so forth and that's when uh, this person started to get into the you know the electronic year started to really listen to electronica after listening to Van Gelis it was mainly um, you know albums like uh, Conquest of Paradise which really you know is a wonderful album but then these albums here started to uh, get started since I had money to actually afford you know CDs at that time started to get into Jean-Michel Jarre and uh, really got into uh, Rendezvous and Chronology those are some key albums and you could tell at the time uh, musical influence at that time uh, Kaleidoscope for example was the beginning of that electronica sound started to go to a different style at that time it was a very experimental album but there are some there's some interesting uh, tracks uh, shadows of substance is one of my favorite tracks very mellow and uh, really appreciate it it was not my f most favorite album probably one of the weakest album this person has produced but it was an influential album into getting into the next step which was uh, the key, uh, key album during the, um, that time in 2009 called video game soundtrack basically the story on this is uh, Joseph was creating a soundtrack I mean a video game He's really into you know C++ and knows how to make games and he was creating this game and uh, remember um, you know, um, when he was we were starting to put it together uh, started to create this uh, video game soundtrack actually it was before then just thought while he was doing that you know what it would it be cool to actually create a soundtrack based on video games that had played in the past so uh, video game soundtrack has some wonderful key tracks in it very 
uh, Nintendo-ish sounding, yet, you know, has that keyboard sound and professional sound. I just love the sound of it. Um, it has a, a very nice uh, sound. The tracks are not too, you know, uh, long, but it, uh, really wonderful, you know, al uh, album. You know, not like the greatest album, but it, you could see it was a very influential album in going forward. Um, after that point, uh, revisited mes Meditations because this person wanted to go back to, to the roots and remember in 2010 created another Meditations 2 Silent Dreams, which had some really wonderful tracks. Silent Dreams is a, a an absolute wonderful track. Very simple, but it's so... Um, what would be the word uh, dreamy it just it's just fantastic some of the pieces on there uh, are really good um, then I think around 2010 after revisiting the roots realized that this person had just uh, wasn't just played what was played on this keyboard live you know and then we would record it uh, thought it was time for a project to actually do some edits of some previous work and that's what led to the 2010 album edit 2003 to 2010 which is kind of uh, you know basically was playing the same songs you know reinterpreting the songs but had gone through what this person had learned during the time and some of the the tracks on there it's a very complete album I think you could start see, hearing the maturity within Edit and uh, knew that was a, a kind of a book in type of album which was appreciating the 2003 through 2010 years and knew it was time to move, move forward. After that point, hopefully this video doesn't get too long but it's, it gets very interesting at that point. Um, started to get into more contemporary electronic music and think what led to that it was around the years 2010 to 2013 I think was uh, just being introduced to Tangerine Dream I think around the the, uh, the later time period of that time probably about 2013 or so uh, some key tracks here uh, the first uh, uh, CD had listened to my uh, mother had gotten me was like uh, best of private music of Tangerine which was of the you know early 90s but it wasn't until uh, later on where again this person can actually afford the CDs were some of the early 80s uh, uh, Tangerine Dream uh, Tan uh, Tangram Hyper Hyperborea and uh, definitely Poland um, those uh, tracks started to really, in, you know, started those CDs started to really influence me. Uh, it was also before going into that, really also had, was listening to Kraftwerk, uh, Computer World, uh, Trans Europe Express, some really wonderful, C, you know, good work there. And uh, uh, I think something though started to happen, especially, um, I think it was. Uh, the end of 2010 it was december of 2010 remember seeing and mentioned these in other videos of seeing um orion with the moon right on top of the head and there was a lunar eclipse right on top and remember seeing that late in the morning and something changed i remember uh, we just turned 30 at that time and something started to mature started to grow the beard and all that and this album started to come out from um, this one piece called night sky which is dedicated to that experience but started to think you know remember the experience album you know originally in 2003 and thought it was time to go back to that and start with putting you know the maturity of what this person had learned over the last eight years and put it in a musical format uh, metamorphosis absolutely fantastic I would say that within is probably my favorite album so far created that album has really good contemporary mature sound and to think that again it came from this keyboard right here it's just amazing uh, just uh, you hear that mature sound 
and uh, w just imagine what could have happened if this person had a uh, little more tools in the shed. Uh, which led to the project because this person enjoyed within so much uh, did another similar album again called eternal uh, sojourn and some the started to really go into the movements again um, and from the battle of principalities were in movements uh, revisited the movements again and uh, remember this one piece ashes to ashes probably the most successful track I think it's been over I think it was the top track yep top track at that time yep still the top track probably the most successful track this person had created people have used it in videos uh, a couple videos and uh, don't know I think it was what it was was uh, uh, just remembering the death of my grandma um, and uh, how close she was to my mother and just those experiences play, being played uh, just absolutely gorgeous piece uh, so definitely had the right spirit and that's what it is about playing I started to realize that playing is about uh, the spirit that is coming within you and knew at the, after that point in time of within that was time to take this seriously not just play around like what that was happening in uh, video game soundtrack but actually go into uh, using the music to actually express something that was going on in a much more serious fashion remember starting that way and needed to understand you know had gone from from MIDI to all this way to this electronic sound and it was time you know to get back to giving out a message and uh, remember Eternal uh, uh, Soldier and, uh, wonderful uh, album again just two right off the bat and knew this person something had changed musically which led to Zug's Wang, Wang um, uh, which is German for compulsive movement hopefully this person pronounced it but it was three uh, ambient tracks but there is this one track um, this fantastic track let's see if this person can remember because it's most likely on here but yes an unknown odyssey uh, part three uh, I think it went it, it's over 40 minutes long and remember when playing it on this thing my goodness it is uh, uh, you know just the limit of this because you could only hold so much space into this keyboard I knew that this person had to had to play it and go then go slow with it so had to actually play at a certain speed and then slow it down in order to get the 40 minute track amazing what you can come up with you know when you put when you when you realize you have very limited tools it's not always about the resources you you have for those of you who are into music and such such people think it's about all these great tools and stuff you know it's really about utilizing what you have and making it work and you can create some fantastic sounds and uh, really a, a excellent album and then another key album this must have been the best time period 2010 to 2013 uh, meditations three faded souls fan went back into the classical and my goodness hit uh, some amazing pieces on there how time flies for granted and uh, oh, what else do we have on there withering grass oh my goodness some real uh, some really good tracks uh, and uh, uh, I think uh, hopefully this person can revisit Meditations album because it's such a true it's not mainstream none of this music is really mainstream but was uh, very appreciative of what uh, sta New Meditations 3 was like a, uh, a full circle type of album it, you, you, the success of Meditations went all the way to the success of Meditations 3 and it had uh, gone full circle by that time was released uh, in 2013 it had been 10 years by that time 
which led to what is known as the remastering years 2013 to 2014 were the main years but also went into 2015 16 later uh, as was when this person was creating future tracks but uh, really uh, after 10 years realized you know really need to um, present this because there was so much material needed to present these in albums and around uh, you know later in 2013 and then eventually in 2014 uh, a lot of these you get these best of the decade albums electronica class contemporary electronic and uh, classical electronic which was actually since I this person had so many successful classical electronic pieces it's measure success as you will but know these were successful in the sense that really hit the nail on the head with these pieces um, was actually two albums had to actually split it because there was uh, I think uh, 34 tracks in that um, in the middle of there actually created um, meditations one and created a nature sounds remaster three um, uh, ten, 10 minute parts uh, believe no is a 20 minute it might be 20 minute parts uh, the first one is about it's more about waves and and the sea uh, the third the second one is more about the, the city it being trapped I think the fourth one is more about um, the journey and uh, going through the trials and uh, uh, the first one, um, a lot of know a lot of people like listening to that. Actually, used uh, nature sounds. Uh, there was, you know, um, there's these websites where they allow you to download, you know, these uh, nature sounds for free, you know, with, without worrying about the copyright and such. As long as they give get credit, uh, because of that, was able to really use these sounds fantastic album um, anyways those are the remastering years which eventually leads to the projects this person is doing now eventually realized by the time uh, 2014 um, came up uh, knew it was time to start saying you know Yamaha you did good to me but now it's time after 10 years think this person had uh, master this pr as much as you could get out of this thing um, eventually decided to do two things one is um, knew the diskette situation was going to cause the issue eventually because you know computers don't really have that so I so eventually had to get the uh, when you know to, to think it was was it Amazon? It could have been eBay, but eventually got the DGX505. Someone just had it in the box, didn't know what to do with it, didn't know how to play play with it, but knew it had allowed a uh, one of those uh, cards that you could put in, which this person regrets because it was just released after this person, right after this person bought this one, but the person this person realizes by this keyboard had very distinct sounds that even though this keyboard is good this one had very distinct sounds that you can use the piano sound on this thing is fantastic I love the Yamaha Grand's uh, keyboard sound it just sounds fantastic and that's what the one of the things this person started to realize with the meditations is to really utilize the benefits of this album uh, of this of this album of this keyboard eventually though uh, decided you know it was time to get the more uh, up-to-date 505 and uh, love Yamaha sound to have three Yamaha because this person was raised in that but eventually started to realize it was time to get more tools in the shed so eventually uh, went in to get FL studio and got these AKAI uh, MPK and then uh, MPK you got the 25 uh, uh, keyboard and the 88 uh, harder um, keyboard you know more sounds more like a you know feels more like a piano and use this to actually make you know it, it, tracks on the FL studio and that's where this person came in with a Leviticus when did a Leviticus come out in 2015 um, uh, really in the it's just finally having the tools okay to create 
a, a decent album and uh, Leviticus stands up okay it's not near like the extreme professional level okay this person's still limited but there's something about Leviticus it has that really good sound to it and really was using uh, th citrus at the time didn't really have a lot of plugins at the time citrus and then maybe some um, hybrid uh, plugins but uh, Leviticus some wonderful you know tracks loved uh, uh, love all of them strange fire was a really you know really hit it that Vangelis sound in it oh my goodness but each of these albums sound you start to realize it's it's you you're hearing you and although you're using the techniques of all these other you know uh, key legends I guess you could say but uh, remember creating tracks using their you know hearing the techniques and knowing my, this person's style and you can hear the style no matter what keyboard it could it start to realize that in the Leviticus album you could still hear you know Yahunaton in the sound you, you know even with a different uh, st you know style of, of playing music it was still there and it really appreciated you know what was accomplished trust pass a uh, fantastic finally understood you know the uh, use electronica to explain a message and then that's the thing about the leviticus album uh, was really reading the scriptures you know still am but had just read the scriptures front to back and went back to leviticus and read reread it and went through the chapters one by one and went through the key uh, stories or points that were in Leviticus and found 21 points and eventually decided it was time to interpret those musically and some people will say why did you use electronica you know to for Leviticus you have to realize Leviticus is explaining things you should not do okay it's not about always things you should do do but it talks about things you shouldn't do so thought you know this is not a somber you know melodic you know there are some melodies but this is a a very harsh you know stern type of album and started to thought you know it was time to get back into the electronica but really use that to interpret what Leviticus is saying and Leviticus is very uh, you wouldn't think you know the electronic mu music would go into it but it really it works uh, example when you hear some of those tracks it can get a sense that you can hear it you can hear it um, eventually after that did an album called I hear and that's when this person started to get into the Artera collection and so finally after all these years by 2016 had the the mon and the means uh, to actually purchase the collect V collection four and five you know and finally you know getting you know the Yamaha you know uh, you, that that Vangelis sound you know that you always liked these these uh, these wonderful you know tracks you know let's see if we can find some of them CS80 I'm thinking probably yeah CS80 uh, mainly that but then I found out this person was really in the Selena hope that's pronounced correctly wonderful sound you could see finally the origin of what this person was looking for finally could find the the original instruments you know and then the you use the arp and the modular finally could get some uh, synthesizers and there never really could use synthesizers before finally with the plugins in the small bedroom remember even having a smaller bedroom before and you can only have very limited space finally had some tools to work with and eventually got into you know the prophet Oberheim and uh, all that uh, matrix 12 and some really good stuff was uh, made in the i hear album a very uh, subtle album very quiet type album really appreciate it because it's very old school sounding really enjoy it and eventually it led to the Leviticus part two because was able to use uh, the the old school sounds 
with electronica sounds and really refine you know um, could, could create something more up to date and uh, play it for you you know a, a, a really good quality sound eventually this person finally started to uh, get into some of the uh, you know other higher software which this person is hoping to start a new project with really looking forward to the future but think it was time at this point to actually create a video like this know this video has been really long but uh, you know a lot of interesting history uh, you know uh, used to go uh, by my uh, uh, real birth name you know but eventually decided during the I hear uh, which is uh, just knew at that album it was time for the name Yehunatan, which is a spiritual name. That's what Jonathan means in Hebrew. And uh, thought it knew it was time to get back to the roots and kind of use the old school, you know, electronic sounds to kind of get back into that, uh, those more ancient times. So, uh, anyways, this is a lot of, you know, uh, it's been a journey. It's been a journey for sure. And to really appreciate, you know, what uh, Yah has provided for this person. And uh, there's going to be many, t much to come. Uh, no, fi eventually going to get more into soundtracks. Really notice people say you're really into the moody, classical soundtrack sound, you know, and uh, you have a signature sound. And eventually, you know, it's, I'm not doing this obviously for the money or for fame. It, it's not about that. It's to express a message that the Creator has provided this person to give and uh, do it in the face of uh, popularism and all this really hard sounding beats and to put something out there, you know, on the charts, right? From Leviticus, you know, playing something a lot more mature and refined, you know, um, really says something, you know, about uh, this time period because people, you know, don't want to hear it. Leviticus is definitely the shunned book of today, but I think it was time to uh, really get back to those things and use the talents that y'all provided. Not the greatest musical player, okay? No, some basic keyboard. Don't know notes. It's not about that. It's about playing. Uh, um, just no. It's the story and the heart, you know, that comes out spiritually into the music. That's really. Uh, what takes it to another level and wish this person was really you know really great at playing music but again i think it's uh, really about expression most people when you go on youtube today will play uh, videos on um, you know of people who are uh, you know uh, basically doing cover songs for other people's tracks and stuff and it's there's a lot of facsimile work and and eventually most like you know would like to revisit some tracks that other people did but think it's time right now with everything that's gone on to really focus on what uh, the creator is expressing right now in this person's life and to give it express it in this way and don't really get nerdy about electronica and i mean electronics and keyboards and stuff that's not what it's about it's the only reason you know this stuff is here is to show you uh, some history but uh, this person's life has been very humble uh, probably throughout the whole time uh, made maybe a few five bucks or something you know that of a real profit i mean it's not really you know for profit means uh, it's for something to hear, you know, someone to hear something like I hear it. If you hear it and, you know, and you get the message, it has served its purpose. And that's what it's about. Eventually going to start recording on YouTube and getting on there. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. And to, honestly, if you have a project, you know, uh, you're not trying to make money off of and you're trying to express something, let me know. You are feel free to use the music, you know, this person has given a very loose uh, copyright um, you know it's basically uh, a creative commons 
okay? And uh, really uh, just want the message to get out there. I think a lot of people have to feel like they have to charge and stuff like that. And this, you know, you're worth your hire, yes, but uh, you just want the message to get out there. And it's not about me, it's about him. And uh, you can, you, you'll hear that spiritual, uh, um, un, you know, understanding in the music. And, uh, and it's just amazing. Uh, every time uh, been doing video series recently um, uh, had a 40-hour series uh, with uh, Aaron Burr Aharon named uh, Jedi Hood which uh, shows the origins of the Jedi and you know and that, that's very very interesting series and also a series called Swordfire uh, been doing a uh, pro prophetic uh, just a uh, not necessarily a word study, not really how you would see a revelation seminar, right? But what was learned in that week and to express it in a way a person could understand scripturally what is being said in the word and how it relates to things that are going on today uh, and to temper the sword of truth. That's what Swordfire is about. I'm really happy uh, going on to 20 uh videos on that already it's amazing but um, been working really hard at work but really have appreciated everything that Yah has provided and uh, thankful for what this person has been able to do uh, with the uh, you know very extremely little support and uh, uh, really you know thank you for watching this no again a pretty long video but know that you will appreciate this video and uh, hopefully it will ins not necessarily inspire you but uh, have you go back and remember what the father is saying to you and to go out there with this message however you're called to do it um, it's uh, it's about doing what he says and uh, hopefully you can appreciate it, no matter what it is musician uh, video then did web le uh, me lectures uh, no matter what it is you want to make sure you're right with Yah and to allow him to influence you you have to have that right spirit so that you can help others when you're called to do that anyways this is Yehunatan uh, appreciate you watching this video uh, there will be many more pieces to come and uh, look forward to having you hear some of them let me know what you think okay this is not a video to promote me but to share something with you um, to let you know this person does not like ego or anything like that very in the background kind of person but if you're you have been touched by something please let me know this person is the kind that very gets can get very discouraged if you could share some of your thoughts um, some music that might have uh, touched you please uh, let this person know so that this person can understand fully what the Yahweh has been providing so thank you very much and uh, you have a great day okay take care bye-bye now